Hey you guys, how you doing? Hi everybody, how are you? Happy Friday, we're here. We made it to the end of the week at last. I can see we've got some people on already, Candy and Marcy. Jasmine's here as well um, and before I go get into right into crafting I know that you guys were probably watching the live on Heffy Doodle earlier today so you might have already seen my graphic for the upcoming event but when we did it on Heffy Doodle there was a problem with the audio so I want to check with you guys if you can now hear me when I put on the graphic for the card making event. So let me switch over to that and hopefully you guys can still hear me. Um, I'm hoping Jasmine or someone might be able to let me know in the comments if you can still hear me when I have that graphic up. So if someone could let me know that would be amazing. just want to make sure that I have figured that out um, for myself because Craig's away at football tonight. So. Um, let me know if you could hear me while I had that graphic up. Yay! You can see me and hear me. Fabulous. I'm the best. <laughs> so for those of you who don't know about this event, I'll mention it now because there will be people watching this on replay. Um, and there is an upcoming event happening the 17th to the 20th of February. It's called the Cardmaker Success Summit. And there's going to be a selection of speakers, over 25 speakers, one of which is me. And um, there's gonna be lots of, I guess, like classes. It's a pre-recorded um, demonstration class type of thing. And the whole event is structured around um, getting your cards done for the whole year. So that's, um, I think, a really cool thing because I actually am the worst at organizing myself for getting cards done in time. I don't know what you guys feel about that. <laughs> but this event um, has that kind of focus to kind of give you tips and tricks to help you get ahead of the game. But also, it, there's loads of just um, tutorials and things. You'll learn about new techniques. You'll learn about um, so much and not only that I think which is actually counts for a lot is the fact that you'll get an opportunity to liaise and hang out with other crafters and I think that community spirit really brings a lot to it. So in this video if you look at the info there is a link at the top which is uh, heffydoodle.com slash cardmaker success summit. Um, and that will take you to a registration page so that you can sign up if you're interested. It is free, but um, I'll also mention that there is the opportunity to sign up for a paid um, thing. You basically upgrade to a paid level of membership and that gives you access to the all access pass. Um, which means that you will get downloadable content, you will get special discount codes, you will get exclusive classes, you will get access to exclusive live sessions with people which are maybe a little bit more um, intimate than some of the others. So I um, just wanted to let you guys know that there is a link down below where you can click on that. Let me catch up on my comments. Candy's here. Marcy too. Candy signed up already. Amazing. Suzanne's here too. Hey Suzanne. Um, and Jasmine says, I did the Christmas summit last year and I had a blast and I cannot wait for this one. Yes, and our friend Amy did it too. Um, and she said that the, um, the all access pass is definitely worth it. But if you are considering doing the all access pass, I wanted to let you know, first of all, because um, I only think this is fair, is that there is like an early bird special. So um, if you know that you're, if you're interested at all, do your research before you click to register because you get the opportunity to get it at a really, really discounted price um, at the start. But the closer we get to the event, it'll become full price as is most things in life. Jasmine has a VIP, woohoo, nice. Right, I am um, going to start crafting, but I'm going to start by cutting out a panel using this, which is um, my paint on cardstock. I'm going to cut a panel at four and a quarter by five and a half. Like a saw. 
And I think I'm going to actually mask off um, an area on this card so that I can get a nice like rectangular shape on here. So I'm going to see if I can... Um, I seem to have like misplaced every single one of my rulers. I don't even know how this happens. Does this happen to anyone else? Like I don't, I don't know how. How does it happen? We're pencils as well. My whole craft room, not a pencil to be seen. I don't really understand it. So we'll just have to use whatever method we can. So got a pink pen here, and I'm just lining that up so I can see that I have a line. And I'm going to line this up like so. And then we'll do it again. Jasmine says, I can never find my ruler either. Glad to see it's not just me then. That's a much easier way to do it. That's my two sides. Could just use a like pattern paper, not pattern paper, scratch paper, if you wanted to. But I have a little stash of memo tape and I love it, so why not? All right. Let's see if I can line this up. So this will give me a nice mast area on my card for some ink blending. All right, there we go. Da -da -da -da. Suzanne said, I broke, oh, I broke out. I thought you said you broke it. <laughs> I finally broke out my heavy doodle mini die cutting machine that I got for Christmas. Oh, I love it. Yay. We all knew that you would. When you, when you finally got to that stage, we knew that you would love it. <laughs> it's so much fun. Absolutely. <laughs> Jasmine says, I use the lines on my station to get the memo tape straight. That's a really good idea, but of course I never had that idea, did I? I am going to use some colors, obviously, some inks. And I think what I am going to do is create a, a ground here on my card. Let's make it take it a little bit higher. And I'll do a, a ground here and then um, a little bit of color above. So for my ground, I'm feeling like I want to do something a bit different. So I think I might go for like a Victorian velvet up top and maybe a blue stormy sky down below. Should we try that? But I think what I'm going to do is attempt to get it quite like faded, quite um, subtle. So let's let's see what I can do. I'll go really light. So some of you will know that I have been um, feeling pearly. I wanted to give you a little update about that as well. So I've been feeling nauseous and I've missed a few of our crafty sessions because I just, I just couldn't. Like this movement with, with the moving like this is like, oh, it's painful, painful. Um, but I managed to get an appointment with a consultant 
for next Tuesday, which is really, really great. However, then yesterday and the day before, I had no nausea at all. So of course I had that whole, what do I do now situation of what if it's gone? What if it's completely gone? And I'm gonna end up going to the doctor and paying for the um, consultation. And they'd be like, why are you even here if you've not got any pain? So I think probably part of me was kind of hopeful that that might be the case. I thought, right, well, we'll wait until Monday and then we'll see if, <laughs> we'll see what, um, I, what, you know, I can cancel on Monday if need be. But today my nausea came back, so it looks like it's not gone completely. But in a way it's a good thing because if I do go to the doctor and they'll probably give me an endoscopy, put a little camera down my throat, and um, we shall see. If I'm still feeling nausea, nauseated, whatever, nauseous, I don't know what the right term is, then Hopefully there's something to see. All right, so I'm trying to make the top section a bit darker. And I'm gonna bring in a little bit of light at the bottom, maybe using tumbled glass. Just to try and lighten that up. A little bit. Awesome. So I'm thinking I'm going to use today, I was thinking about using Who Let the Dogs Out? Um, and my first thought was actually to create a card with dogs in the snow because it was snowing here today and Ranger was running around the snow having a jolly good time. Um, but then I wasn't really feeling like uh, it's kind of getting to the, the part where I don't think people are really sending wintry cards anymore. So I was um, thinking, right, well, I'll still use the dogs. And then I had the idea because I don't know about you guys, but our dog is ridiculous when it comes to sleeping on our bed. So I thought I might actually put the dog on the bed from bed head. So that is one of my thoughts at the moment. Who else do we have here? Breen is here, hi. Let's give this a little splatter first of all. Lovely. And I'm going to also, I think, splatter it with a little bit of inky puddles. Little inky puddles. Oh, that's coming out yellow. I mustn't have cleaned my uh, brush beforehand. We don't want yellow, so we'll forget that idea for now. A very green brush, so. Pop that over there. Need to clean that one later. Uh, Jasmine says, yes, dog on the bed. I had this idea written down, so it'll be so cute. Yay. Great mind, think alike. Here I have some Victorian velvet. Now this is a, a color that I very rarely reach for. What about you guys? Do you have any colors like that that are less loved in your stash? And it's not intentionally left less loved, it just happens to be less loved. And for this one, I'm actually gonna fade to white at the bottom. 
is my idea. Doesn't go all the way down. Good. It's gonna look so different to some of the other cards that I have, which I always tend to navigate between teals and yellows and pinks. So it's exciting to do something different. Belle loves her dead bed, but thankfully she's really good at getting down when it's actually bedtime. Oh, Ranger has like a proper system. So he will lie on at the foot of our bed. And then if I'm lying on the bed, because normally I head off to bed first, um, he I will just go, <laughs> I will just say to him, beep, beep, and he will get up and go to the bottom of where Craig lies. Um, and then whenever Craig comes to bed, Craig also, also has to say to him, you know, come on, let's go do a wee before bed. And Ranger's goes, oh, he does not want to get up at all. And um, finally, he gets up, Ranger goes, has a wee, runs back so he can cuddle up on the bed again. Craig gets ready for bed, brushes his teeth and um, gets like ready to climb in and then it's almost like he's trying to say like Ranger like off you go to your own bed because he's got a dog bed in our bedroom and um um he Ranger's like grumble 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 and <laughs> so he goes off to his own bed which is which is fine but after about 20 minutes we're reading our books and nearly always I'm like just about to fall asleep but Craig is still wide awake and Ranger will come to the bottom of the bed and you can hear him clattering around his little click 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 on his paws and um and then so he's trying to jump up in the bed but he doesn't want to jump where our feet are so I have to line up and press the button on my watch so that it illuminates with the light and just that little tiny bit of light gives him enough time to figure out where he can jump up and then he jumps up and snuggles at our feet and he's a happy boy Allison says did you get much snow earlier yeah well we did it was actually quite um it was quite good coverage. I mean, it was probably only about an inch or so. Piper went out on it, but, um, and Craig too. I think they were able to throw some snowballs. But, um, I mean, the sun came out then straight away afterwards. Oops, sorry guys. The sun came out then afterwards and um, actually cleared up a lot of it. But there was also, um, I think the temperature dropped quite significantly because um, it then got really freezing. I took Ranger out for um, a W-A-L-K after dinner and it was really quite slippy out there. Yeah. I think there's probably still some, some of the white stuff out there. Oh, exciting. Nessa's here. Hey, Nessa. How you doing? Hey, Craigie. Craigie's home from footballing. Is it cold, is it? Brrr. All right, let's stamp out one of the beds from bed here. Jasmine says, all you're here for the, the, oh, hello. All you're here for the actual Friday Live is Oscar giving you free time. Oh, who is it? Oh, I don't think you're talking to me, Jasmine. <laughs> all right, let's see what we can do here. 
Now, part of me wants to color in our bed linen to match the bed linen in our bedroom. So my question for you is, what does the bed linen in your room look like at the moment? I'd like to know. Can you describe it for me? We have a gray, oh, it might be black actually, bed frame, like a leather one, because ours is an ottoman bed that you can lift up. And we have a gray under um, sheet and gray pillows underneath with a white duvet with like little teal flowers over it, like a cherry blossomy type thing. So it's gray, white and teal. Nessa says hers is plain block color lemon yellow. Oh, that sounds so bright and refreshing. That sounds really nice. Piper actually has a plain yellow like this, like a bright, bright yellow bed linen on her single bed. Although it's not really had the, seen the light of day in a while because she is now panda obsessed and she has, when we did up her room, it's like purple colors. So she has a purple, a plain purple one. And then my sister bought her a panda bedspread. So she pretty much alternates between those two. Hey, Ranger. Come and give us a, um, be a model for us. Color it in range of colors, of course. As range your eyes. Little stripe up here. He has a little bit of a little bit of a darker patch here. On his schnout. Let me go check my model. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think we got some patches down here. And he has his characteristic spot here. And comes down a leg as well. Teal half brown. Nice. His little feet are white, but Sometimes they're a bit discolored. There he is looking adorable. I have a gray, uh, so can he say, oh, let me catch up. Do, 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 do. Alison says, I know, actually live. This must be who does I'm speaking to. Hello, Alison. Um, He's had cricket practice. Oh, this will be um, your other, the guy that you're talking about, Cool Beans. Oh, Suzanne says, my husband fell on the ice a couple of days ago. His hip is an incredible shade of purple. <gasps> Ooh, oh, I'm so sorry. That's no good. I hope that it recovers well and that you're treating him and letting him lay up a little bit. Just a little bit, though. <laughs> Candy says, I have an amazing purple and teal quilt that my mom made me for Christmas. Ooh, that sounds amazing. Sounds really nice. Darken up some of these ears. And patches. Yeah. 
looking really good. I'm going to put a wee bit of darkness in the middle there. Blend it out. Looking good, Brain John. Candy says, I have grey, looks like barn board slats with black buttons. Ooh, that sounds nice as well. Jasmine says, my bedroom is so boring. <laughs> we discovered that um, one of the life hacks, especially when sleeping with a dog on our bed, um, is actually get, we have a king size bed, but we got a super king size duvet. <laughs> um, definitely worth it. So I had a little bit of a challenge trying to get nice duvets in the bigger size. I was looking for months. And then my mother-in-law kept sending me pictures of stuff, which was really sweet of her, but I was like, I kind of, you kind of have to see it or like the photos weren't always the best. <laughs> so, but we got one in the end. Uh, Candy says, because the quilt is so colorful, I sweat too much at night. I have a plain white sheet so they can't, so they can be bleached. Good idea. Here's Ranger. And here's my bed. Yeah. All right, so I think I'm going to give this a go to color it as per our bedroom. So we have a gray bed frame. Which actually sort of a neutral color will go well with our colors here. This bit is grey too. Although I think ours has got like stripes on it. So maybe we'll add in some stripes. By stripes I just mean like stitching coming up like this. You know some of them have like little buttons or tufts on them? Mm. Suzanne says, I'm just glad he didn't break anything. Yes, absolutely, me too. All right. Bring up some of that gray a little bit. Okay, so. Instead of doing tufts, I'm going to do little stripies. Let's put a stripey down the middle because I'm trying to see if I can get them. Get it um, somewhat even. I think that looks okay. And I think what I'll do is I'll make this quite dark right in underneath this section. Nice. Jasmine says, interesting color nest. I've never known a different ceiling to white. Oh, here I need to camp jump. Nessa says, we decided to have our feature color on our ceiling instead of the wall. So white walls and yellow ceiling and skirt. That sounds really cool. That is really funky. That's awesome. Marcy's got an accent wall in a warm cocoa color. Nice, nice. <laughs> Alison's helping with a little bit of context. Oscar's my 10-year-old son. I normally watch your Friday live on catch up on a Sunday and Jazz is always on me to watch it live. So here I am. Hi. Well, it's so nice to have you here. And um, big thank you to your son who is doing whatever he's doing so that you can join us. <laughs> Yay! That's always a good one. 
my child, my 10 year old child, should be in bed, but I can hear her talking to her father down there. So it's going to ignore that. It's going to ignore that. All right. So I have got, um, it's sort of like a duck egg blue color actually. So this is not an accurate color. is BG000 but that's too light. What is a duck egg blue color? Anyone anyone with a suggestion for a duck egg blue color in Copics? <laughs> Let's do B triple zero and then we'll greenify it. G zero zero. Yes, that looks about okay. Jasmine says I've totally enabled Allison over to Happy Doodle. <laughs> Uh, not even sorry, not even sorry that you did. <laughs> BG10, yeah, BG10 is, but it's very, very light, so it wasn't really coming out very well. So we've also got... Pillows, you know the pillows that you don't use, but it makes your, uh, makes your bed look plumpy and nice. Yeah. You're just grumbling over there. Let's see if we can darken up some of these areas. BG34. No, no. We've got my feet. So we'll go super dark with the feet. What says T7? The T5. Nice. All right. So for my bedspread, we have got, like I say, white. But if you're doing white, you want to make sure you're adding a little bit of color shading so I've got T0 happening here I'm just flicking in from the sides so that it doesn't look too um just flat it looks horrible when it's flat so I'm going to make sure that's nice and dry and then I'm going to probably try and attempt to draw little leaves on it It does not have to be perfect. It just needs to kind of give the impression of pattern. Can you guys see that so far? So far, what is working for me is kind of doing a little circle like this and then flicking up. And it seems to... Seems to be doing the trick so far. And then it is also... Some gray in our bedspread, so I'll maybe add a little bit of gray as well. Not that I'm worried about being, you know, factual. 
we all know when it comes to card making, you do not have to obey the laws of physics or the laws of reality. But it is fun sometimes to take inspiration from reality. I said I had a whole week off work and I achieved zero card making and 100% TV drama catch up. Well, you know what, Jazz? I think that's important too. What are you watching at the moment? Because my, my jam at the moment is Criminal Minds. Have you guys seen it? Do you guys watch it? Um, I'm also watching Friends, um, which has actually given me so much more joy because Piper is like getting into it too. So I'll just watch them watching through the series, is, but she'll come along like, so what's happening and catch up and catch maybe an episode or two. But she just, it, it's so nice to see her um, watch it and get some of the jokes and things. It's really funny. Tonight we just watched the episode with Ross's new couch and the pivot, pivot. And uh, it was interesting because she said that one of the kids in her class actually has a friend's notebook and it says pivot all around it. Um, so we thought it was really funny. Even though she'd never seen it, it's still in the realm of her um, you know, her friends, you can still see it. She's getting very into it now, so that's fun. <laughs> Jazz says, I watched a bit of everything, mostly short dramas from BBC, ITV, and Channel 4. All right, so I'm trying to draw a little like line like this. So almost like the stalk of a leaf and then I'm coming off on either side with little flicks and I am varying the direction of the curve. So sometimes like this, sometimes like that, like that, just to make it look more random. And I'm making sure that I have bits coming off the side of the bedspread as well. So let me show you what this looks like so far so you can see. I actually think it's like I'm pretty close to what my bedspread looks like. <laughs> Should get Craig to bring my pillow up here. <laughs> so I'm going to add a couple of little um, flicks and shadows using the darker green. Just so it's not so flat. In certain places. And like I say, there is some gray in places. So let's take a T3. And I'm just gonna actually add a couple of like dots. It ties in some of those colors. Oh, do you know what I did where I actually feel like an adult. I, I decided that um, in our bedroom, so this is our bed, I sleep on this side, Craig's on this side, and we have bedside cabinets here, and then over here we have Ranger's bed, which he uses for about 20 minutes, <laughs> and then over here there's a gap. So I decided that what we should do is get a plant, but like a big plant. So a plant that's like this big, like, shoo, um, to make it look 
nice organic situation. I'm really excited because I've been ages looking for a plant because I needed a plant that wasn't going to die. And I completely am prepared for the fact that it will probably die. <laughs> Sad but true. Hopefully I will. I'm going to try my best, guys. Um, I think it's called Akentia Palm. Palm. Akentia Palm. Does that sound about right? So hopefully I can manage to keep it alive. That would be awesome if I could. We shall see. Jasmine says, I can't keep plants alive. Yeah, that has been my problem historically too. But, and we do have some fake plants around, which I do like having the fake plants, but I do also think that the real plants will just give us something a little extra je ne sais quoi. So we shall see. We shall see if it uh, if it survives. Oops, my die did not. Must have been hanging off the edge a little bit. There we go. No problem. Awesome. And this is Ranger on my bed. So what sentiment will we put on here? Allison says, my cat eats my plants. Yeah, you have to be careful because some of them are like poisonous to cats, aren't they? Silly kitty cats. Silly kitty cats. We could put up um, some frames on the walls, but I feel like... Um, I feel like we might have a sentiment up here. <laughs> Jasmine says I've also killed succulents. So have I. How do we do it, Jasmine? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Suzanne says these stands are so stinking cute. Yay. All right, so I'm loving this. I'm wondering, I think I might actually give this stamp, this um, ground, a bit of perspective. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and stick on some of these again. So I can add a little bit of perspective to my room. So what I mean by that is that this bit is straight but then these kind of come out at a little bit of an angle if you know what I mean. So I am going to just take whatever I have here. We'll do one in the middle. A little bit of a line. And then we'll do one. Start that angle a little bit. Even more. I'm using the edge of my um I'm using the edge of my blending tool there. Because it's more about getting that little bit of line in there rather than adding more colour. That makes sense. Oh, I don't know if you guys can see this as yet. We'll go on this side and I'm going to try and imitate what I've got on the other side. It's fairly subtle. And it will be even more subtle whenever you put the bed on top. But I think it really makes it look um, like it's 
from the room now, don't you think? Having those lines on there. Jasmine says, I can see it. Great tip. That looks amazing, says Suzanne. And Jasmine says, I know exactly when I can try this for a design team card idea on mine. Yay. All right. So part of me was kind of wondering if I could if I could fit a plant in here, but I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. So let's see. What could we have on this uh, card? I think... I might actually crack out the old um, stitched alphabeters. And I wonder, I'm trying to do something a little bit clever here, a little bit funny. A little bit funny. I wonder if this will fit. So let's see. A B. Y'all know what this is, right? I think we can make this work. Don't you? I'm loving this. Happy Zoomies. <laughs> I think that will make a perfect um, sentiment for this stamp set, or for this uh, card. I think it'd be really fun. <laughs> Jasmine's saying yes, yes. So before I actually... Um, Cut out my letters. I'm going to add some cracked pistachio. Oops, I accidentally just touched that. To the bottom half of this piece of card. Along with a little tumble glass. Like go. And now oh, let's die cut some of these letters. So I'm planning to have this like two tone effect. where it's white going to this teal color. And annoyingly, I'm going to need an extra bit for my extra P and my extra O, but hey ho. In fact. Oh no, that was being clever there. Jazz says, I have a video of Belle doing exactly this on my head. Mm -hmm. Suzanne says, that's hilarious. Oh, we've got somebody spamming us. Let me go get rid of it. Happy Zoomies, happy Zoomies. 
I also think we have little like water droplets in um, the Elephant of Surprise stamp set. So I feel like we could add a couple of like water droplets there, you know, because zoomies do strike most fiercely straight after a bath. At least in our house anyway. I think also to make it um this scene accurate, we also need to have an assortment of toys lying around the room. What do you guys think? <laughs> And not just toys, but can, toys that have been absolutely shredded within an inch of their life. Yeah. That's what my dog does. Jasmine says, yes, definitely after bath. Or if she gets caught in a really bad rain and, and then... <laughs> She goes nuts when we get back in. Mm -hmm. That is definitely what it is all about. I, I think I'm going to grab some holy mackerel cardstock. And die cut some letters with this as well so that we can create little shadows for all of these letters. That will make them pop and also tie in the gray color in the rest of the card, I think. Oh, Alison says, my Yogi is too old for Zoomies now. Oh, Yogi is an adorable name. I love that. What type of dog is Yogi? I know you said you had a cat, but I'm assuming Yogi is a dog. Maybe Yogi is a cat. Oh, he's a staff lab. Oh, super cute. H. A. We need another P. Y. Need another O. Z and an E. like I might be missing some letters but we'll give it a go let's put some glue on the side of this with glue bird so that we can Add some glue to these letters. I'll just cut myself a little sliver of card here. 
which will be my makeshift glue stick for tonight. Zan says, I'd never heard of a Staffy Lab, just Googled it. Yogi must be adorable. Yes, so it's a Staffordshire Terrier, or is it a Staffordshire Bull Terrier? I can never remember. Which, now that I think of it, might be because it says Staffordshire. Does that mean it's like a UK thing? Where's the A? Did I not cut out the A? Maybe I didn't. Maybe I should check these things before I start uh, adding glue. Uh, P and P. Okay, I've got two P, so I'm okay to glue that down. The thing that I like so much about Staffies is that people, well, oh, P's already done. Like, I think people always think that they're going to be vicious or something like that because they're a big dog and they have these, like, burly look to them, but they're actually the most sweetest dogs ever. Z. Make sure I put my green at the bottom to match everything else. They really are, says Marcy. And Jasmine says, Staffies are my favorite breed, obviously. <laughs> Because um, Belle is a Staffy, and she's beautiful. My, uh, yeah, my favorite thing is whenever the Staffies, like, open their mouth wide like that, because it just looks like a super big smile. And if you've Googled them, you'll, you'll see exactly what I mean. Oh no, thank you. Let's pop this other P out. Jasmine says they have amazing smiles. Totally agree. So I know Candy's got big plans for crafting this weekend. What about everyone else? What's everyone else's plans for this weekend? Why did I cut an R? No R in zoomies, silly me. I must have meant to cut the M. Piper has ski lessons tomorrow. She was supposed to go last week, but um, we've had some storms up here 
and the ski school had no electricity. So it got rescheduled for tomorrow, which actually works really nicely for me because she, um, last week it was, I'm pretty sure it was early in the morning. Um, but tomorrow it's at one in the afternoon. So it means we don't have to get up at the crack of dawn. Let's face it, everyone needs a little lie-in every now and again. Right. Just an A. Jazz says, I really should do some crafting this weekend, but it might be lots of dog walks and gardening. Oh, are you doing gardening? Can you keep plants alive outside or are you merely getting rid of the weeds? <laughs> I think the extent of the gardening we'll be doing is picking up some little presents that are lying around the garden. Although, to be fair, if it's covered in snow, there'll not be much of that either. Still a bit cold here for doing gardening. Right, we've got my happy zoomies on the go now. Let me just wipe this little bit of ink here. I'm going to um, raise up my bed using my double-sided foam. A happy little foam. Outside plants aren't so bad, says Jazz. Preparing the beds for easy growing veg. Good shout. Jasmine says with rhubarb. Rhubarb is like relentless. You can't stop rhubarb from growing. Oh, you have an apple tree? I'd love an apple tree. Cherry plum tree growing. So hopefully some nice crumbles this year. Ooh, that sounds delicious. I actually have, I must send you the recipe, um, a really good recipe for like rhubarb crumble bars, I guess. Um, yeah, I'll have to send you send a recipe your way. Get Mr. Zoomy up here. B. Let's 
let's stick this down. And I'm not going to attempt to get this straight because I think if I attempt to do it straight, it'll not turn out straight and then it'll look bizarre. So I'm going to go for that haphazard, whimsical look. I'll claim that Ranger knocked everything out of sync when he was performing the Zoomy ritual. So happy's easy because it's a shorter word. So let's have a little look at zooming. So M is the middle letter, but the letters on the left are wider, a bit wider than the ones on the right. So we might need to do a little bit of um, moving around a little bit. there. What do you guys think? That will work. Of course, this is pretty much going to cover all those lines that we did at the bottom, but there's still they're still there, and I think they'll still help guide the eyes a little bit. My comments have disappeared. There we go. So I am excited about um, going, getting to go see the consultant next week because it's over in Aberdeen. We get to go to a different city. Hopefully I'm not too sicky that I can't enjoy it. Yeah. I'm loving this. Now let me go get the Elephant of Surprise stamp set. Um, and Hot Diggity Dog also has some like water bits and pieces. Let's see what we've got. Okay, this is definitely like a big squirt. So that's not really suitable. This is a cute plant. But there's not really enough room there, so I think what we'll do is we'll go for some of these little, these little guys. And we'll just stamp them using the acrylic block for tonight, I think. Because they're the world's tiniest little bits and bubbles. I'm not even worrying if this paper is 
I'll call marker friendly cardstock because I don't think it'll make a big difference for the tiniest little droplet like this. So that was B32, which is actually sort of a similar color to down here. And I'm definitely going to need memo tape to hold these little babies in place. Sometimes for these little baby ones, it's actually much easier to um, die cut it first and then stamp on top because you can use the memo tape upside down to hold it and secure it so it doesn't move around. By right, if this is a, a representation of my dog after he's had a bath, there should also be a dentist stick there because Ranger always gets a dentist stick after his bath. And let me tell you, he does not let us forget it. Not at all. Suzanne says, I made a shaker card today and I worked so hard doubling up the foam tape and working it around where I need it to be only to realize I'd applied it to the wrong side. I'm so sorry for you. And I have been there. I have absolutely been there. I think we've all made uh, little oopsies like that. Doesn't make it any less frustrating, but still, you are not alone. Jazz says, I've managed to reposition the Heffy Doodle foam tip without ruining my project. Yeah, you have to do it pretty like straight away though. Which, so if you realized while you were making, then you might be able to get away with it. Um, but yeah, certainly I wouldn't leave a project then come back to it, be no chance then. But I think I've managed to pull mine off as well. All right, let's see. Wet dog on the bed, oh no. Oh no. Wet dog on the bed. Oh. <laughs> I love it. Suzanne says, heavy little foam tape is now on my shopping list. You're gonna love it. No more doubling up for you. 
that's why we designed the happy little foam tape i was like no way cannot be bothered with this and also i just felt like i didn't want my crafty friends to be wasting their um money on doubling up foam tape like it just costs more money then you're using twice as much foam on one card yay happy zoomies i love it so i don't know if we need like a ball lying around or a little bony or something a bone under the bed i don't want to I think maybe a ball over here would look okay. I don't want to like lose my balance of my card. But let's give it a go. If it, we don't think it's gonna work, then we'll not include it. So I've added a little bit of the teal color because I didn't really want to add too many other oops, colors to my color palette. Um, but I also added a little bit of like a murky brown because let's face it, all dog tennis balls are pretty gross. And in fact, if this was an actual representation of um, one of Rangers, it would probably also be plucked within an inch of its life or just be half a tennis ball because he likes to make it his life's mission <laughs> to decimate all the toys. I think that's just what he considers playing with the toys. It's like, yay, a thing for me to destroy. Yeah, let's hide it for fun. Oh, the other thing we could do actually, if I have it here, is this one has little paw prints. So I think we could make that work. Have a couple little paw prints coming on this side. Oh, my foam tape's gonna get in the way a little bit, but see if we can make it work. Trial run. Oh, loving it. Yes, exactly what we needed. So I need to mount this onto a piece of card. So I think I'm going to use some heavy little cornflower card because it is somewhat similar to the, the blue tone at the bottom. Ooh, I actually don't have any full sheets here, so that I'll have to wait for another day. But this is the cornflower card, so I think if we mount this on this kind of colored card, that would tie in really, really well. So that's a job for tomorrow. 
But before I finish up, earlier I made a card, actually I'll show you. Morgan and I did a live stream and I made this card, a Valentine's card using the Bots of Love. And I used my Nouveau Crystal Glaze, which is pretty much dry. Um, and I think I'm going to add a couple more little locking the user. Um, I'm going to use this to add some dimension to these water droplets. And I think that will really make this stand out. Um, the other thing I was thinking of is just adding a couple of these dots, almost like sequins. Oh, hello. All right, so. Like so. And now I have to not touch it. <laughs> I should have held it up for you guys to see. Let me see if I can do that without damaging my wares. Here we go. Happy zoomies. I think it came out so well. I love it. Marcy says the robot, robot came out so cute in this one. Mm -hmm, I think so too. Hold this up as well. So you can take a look. I love his little eyebrows. I really love how you call it the bed. Great ideas, Leslie. Well, inspired by real life. <laughs> so here we go, the final pieces. I'm gonna pop this down so that I don't put my finger in it because I have a habit of doing that. Right, guys, before I go, let me just finish up by reminding you that if you haven't already, please come on over and register for the event that's going to be happening on the 17th to the 20th of February. It's a Card Maker Success Summit and you'll find the link down here in the info section. Um, if you're looking for it, it's heffydoodle.com slash card maker success summit. And you will be able to join me and over 25 other people who We'll be having presentations and sharing lots of super fun, fun, fun things. And if you decide to go for the all access pass, you'll get these extra bits and pieces as well. But follow that link and you'll be able to find out all the information over there. I hope to see you then. Marcy says, love them both and lots of love hearts. And Candy says, you have a great weekend. Thanks for crafting with us today. Thank you so much. I'm going to go get my pajamas on and um, you enjoy the rest of your day. Bye, everybody. Ciao.